<laughs> I was definitely muted too. What's going on? Nathaniel, I was shouting you out. I said you're the first person in here. Shout out to everybody on tube. Shout Thank out to you. everybody with, on our home team. Let's let them in. I know, Jan. I, I, know, I know I was muted. I was talking to myself. <laughs> it's ugly outside. It's, it's nasty outside. Yeah. Why man. wouldn't it be? It's ugly outside right now. Why wouldn't it be? Hold your head. Everybody hold your head. Everybody hold your head. Very important. Very, very important. Put the bat. What's up? What's up? What's going on? It's good to get brother in here. Yeah. What's going on, y'all? <sighs> A lot to talk about today, man. Y'all know the market has been going crazy. Going crazy, man. If you've been following the market, crypto market is going crazy. Yo, it's coming to those numbers. Stock market is going crazy. Numbers is looking crazy. Interest rates is up. See how that impact impacts the housing market. Putin's still out here running around like Suge Knight in the early 90s. Um, man, inflation is still high. That's a fact. It's it's a lot going on right now, man. Market money is still here, most importantly. What's going on? Shout out to the city of Atlanta. Shout out to the city of Atlanta. Shout out to Culture Con. If y'all was out there, we pulled up, had a nice conversation. Shout out to the people at Cash App. We gave some things away. Shout out to my guy, Gary. <laughs> Shout out to everybody at Cash App. Shout out to um, Culture Con for having us. Appreciate it. And yeah, we was in Atlanta this weekend. We got an opportunity to speak at Culture Con. And we gave away $10,000 worth of Bitcoin live on stage um a bunch of people won yeah seats were tossed super super dope it was situation fly. so fly. you never know what could happen anytime that we speak you never know what could happen that was really a, a good vibe so you know that was really really dope once again yeah, shout yeah, out to yeah. cash app shout out to gary and shout out to culture con we yeah. got to see a lot of our friends we got to see uh jada shout out to jada um entrepreneur yeah, yeah we got to see Corey from support black colleges My 19 dog. keys pulled up yep Oh, Jay man. Ellis. Jay Ellis. Yeah, cool. Cool yeah, dude. Yeah, cool dude. Super cool dude. Yeah, Shout yeah. out to him. Everybody go see Top Gun. Um, That's dropping at the end of this month. I think the 27th. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to, shout out to Jay Ellis. Uh, great dude. Shout out Stacey Abrams. Grace, that's what her presence Abrams, at yes. Culture Con. Yes. Um, Stacey so, Abrams. That was incredible. Without further ado, while we wait for Ian. Oh, he's here? Yeah, he's here right now. Let's make it. All right, so big, big week for EYL. Let me just um, run off some some uh, housekeeping items. My guy, Jew Bernard, will be teaching a class for us on Wednesday. Shout out to Jew. Big episode for us tomorrow. What's up, brother? Brought the suit back, huh? Yeah, you know, I'm a Superman. It's oh. gonna be a great one. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Oh, doing. flashback. Got to do it. He is saying Patrick has returned. Blast from the past. <laughs> Getting back to it. Y'all in trouble. I hope y'all know that. I like it. I like the combination. Man. I like the gray and red. I like the gray and red combination. Man. Fly. Real fly, bro. You, brother. I appreciate Real it. Fly. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, I was just rounding off what we got going on. Um, Asses over liabilities is tonight on you on Revolt's television channel. And Wednesday, Wednesday on a YouTube channel. YG. Who do you love? I guarantee you this will be. Yeah. 400. 400. You will look at him differently. I didn't really know what to expect. You know, YG, you know, you know, you already know the persona that he has. So I didn't really know what to expect. But when I met him, super cool. Introverted at first, but really opens up after he gets comfortable with you and very sharp, very intelligent. Once I found out that he was a Pisces, it all made sense. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. We was just kicking it after a while. Yeah, shout out to my guy. YG, super, super dope. What you do? You gonna cut the volume off or not? No, no, I'm super to dope that. conversation. Yeah. Um, so yeah, shout out to that. And tomorrow, earn your leisure. <laughs> Big one. Big one. I don't pose no threats on the internet. I just pose a threat. Blame Lenny S for that. Yeah. We man. got Lenny Santiago, better known as Lenny S. That's gonna be one of Jay Z's right hand. Um, been with Jay for over twenty five years. Mm -hmm. Rock Nation. Yep. Do say. Uh, do say. Kodak Lens himself, yes. photographer, author. Lenny S. Soon to be. Super dope conversation about, you know, his journey in the music biz. 
working with Jay from the beginning of Rock. He actually worked with Diddy at Bad Boy before he went to Rockefeller. Um, but he was at the very beginning before Rockefeller even started. He's been with them. He's been with Jay-Z ever since. Um, like I said, 25 years he's been with Jay. So um, shout out to Lenny S. The stories are incredible. Yes. The stories behind the scenes are even better. And he just, uh, if you don't follow him on Instagram, do yourself a favor, go follow him. I mean, this guy lives a life. He lives a life. So he was at, shout out to everybody that was in Miami this weekend for F1. He was there. Shout out to Nas who put on. Did you see that performance? Shout out to Esco, man. Oh my gosh. Nas put on a performance last night. Back, Khaled, back Jordan. To this, back to this linear situation. That's legendary. You don't know. <laughs> you don't know. You, you don't know. Boy. Rock Nation. One degree away. Oh, um, well, okay. You, you know the rules. <laughs> yeah, I know the rules. We're going to just keep saying it until the chair is open. So um, I got to make a special announcement. This week, Atlanta. Atlanta, Georgia, we having two events on Saturday and they're both free. So on Saturday at nine o'clock in the morning, we're having a youth event. Shout out to American Life Insurance Company. We teamed up with them and um, we have an event for children, young adults from the ages of 12 to 17. It's going to be a uh, all day situation where they're going to do STEM. They're going to do pitch competitions. We got some leaders in venture capital that's going to talk to them. We'll be talking to them business. I think they're even actually doing some yoga. So super, super dope for the kids, 12 to 17. Spaces are limited. So if you're a parent or if you're a youth leader, you have a group, you can get group tickets as well. Just go to our website and click ATL Youth Event. Now, we are doing also, we're doing an event for adults. Once again, shout out to American Life Insurance Company. That is on Saturday as well. That's at 1130. That's a fireside chat. Me and Troy, we're going to yep. be talking for like an hour and a half, just Ooh. giving game, giving as much game as possible. Really just, you know, giving all the secrets to everything that we've, we've done, we've been able to accomplish. And then you'll be able to network with us afterwards. So that's going to be a super dope situation as well. So that's on our website as well. Click the link, EYL Fireside Chat. That's for adults. The other event is for the children. We're going to be doing it simultaneously. It's free, but space is limited. So you must RSVP. The keyword is limited, right? Don't play yourself. It's going to sell right. out fast. They won't say it. They are going to be <laughs> up. I'm going to brag for them. It's going to sell out fast. Please be there. All right. Um, wanna... Slammer time? Yes. Yeah, All right, disclaimer. let's do it. Let's do it. All right, so y'all know how this works, man. Do your own research. Our content is intended to be used and must be used for informational purposes only. It's very important to do your own analysis before making any investment based on your own personal circumstances. You can take, you should take, and you could take. Uh, independent financial advice from a professional in connection with or independently research and verify any information that you find on our show and which you rely upon, whether for the purpose of making an investment decision or otherwise. This is a message brought to you by the good brother that Aaron Leisure and the good brother Ian Dunlap, the master investor himself. Please do your own research. Feel free to share your research. That's how community grows, y'all. Yeah. The, and, uh, yeah. And then, you know, we got a shout out to the Red Panda family. Shout out to the earners. We'll let y'all know about a great choice if you're looking to bank or invest. Our good folks from Ally, shout out to Ally. They are the leading digital financial service company with passionate customer service, innovative financial solutions, and are relentlessly focused on doing it right for both customers and our communities. Get with Ally so you can save, invest, and spend on the things that matter most to you for everything we need. We're all better off with an Ally. Shout out to Ally. Shout out to our team at United Masters. We pulled up on them um, the other day. So, had a, they had a they had a dope, dope, dope activation. Uh, Stout was there. Issa Rae was in the building. It was it was pretty incredible. Shout out to them. I was moving the shake. Jones. Yeah, yeah. Jim was there. Shout mm-hmm. out to everybody that pulled up on us at that as well. Yep. Shout out, you got you got mob right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where you at? I'm in the car. Come on. Yeah. That New York City, love, New York City, <laughs> that New York City love is different, man. Shout out to yeah. shout out to the city. All right, Ian, the floor is yours. For any announcements that you want to make? Um, May fourteenth, we'll be in Los Angeles with J.P. Morgan, Damon John, uh, MC Lights, Dom Kennedy. Um, the event is sold out, but we will be doing another one in Dallas. So I will post that tonight. You guys can get info. It's probably gonna sell out on one day as well. So when I post the link, sign up if you want to uh, be there. Get some insights on investing, entrepreneurship, trading. You can be there. Stock Club call tonight at 9.30. We're going to talk about how to use advertising to grow uh, your business to $10 million a year with my buddy David. That's going to be fun. And let's have an amazing show. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. Shout out to all the mothers. Hopefully you had a, a great Mother's Day, uh, a relaxing one, a, a, a fun-filled one. Um, just want to say that before we, we even go any further. Shout out to all the mothers out there. 
Absolutely. Let's do it. Uh, let me share a screen and we can make some magic happen. How y'all feeling? Oh, oh yeah. Also, um, Star Club. Um, that's this yes. week, right? People. Yes. Yeah. Please stop emailing I, us. I, I, I just <laughs> got yeah the emails tonight. <laughs> that's will be uploaded either first thing tomorrow morning or three a.m. tonight. I just got them before the show. Haven't forgot about you. I appreciate you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Good um, people. Okay. You will be added. You will be added. Good people. Can you guys see my screen? Yes, sir. Perfect. And then let me make sure we're good on sound. And let's have an amazing show. Let's get right into it. It's been a while since we've done one of these. So Can you hear me? given the place that we are in the market, I think it's time for me to remind you. Remember, when everyone wanted the market to drop, and everyone who missed out in 2020 and you were praying for a breakthrough to have your moment to then shine to be able to invest you should not be afraid now welcome to market mondays really quick i want to shout out a couple people um so the queen uh i appreciate you for sharing this with me and being able to win your first trade let's clap it up for her and say congrats number two my brother i appreciate you for sending this to me um to be able to make your first hundred thousand dollars in one day is absolutely fucking amazing. I'm proud of you. And what I will tell you is put 80% of it away, whether you save it or invest it into something guaranteed, you'll be happy if you did. Um, because we've all been in trades that have won and we've been up and then we start to deviate and we'll talk a lot about that tonight. Um, but stick to the plan no matter what. Please put in chat, stick to the plan no matter what. And this one, which is seeming to break the internet, kudos to the queen to turn 2 million, 2.5 million into 50. And hopefully pretty soon here, soon we'll get an interview and break down this entire process for you. But tonight, I wanna share with you the 29 lessons that I would share with my baby Xander about how to take advantage of a recession. I know some of you are panicking and you're seeing the market go down. And now some of you are experiencing your first real recession and opposed to looking at it as a blessing, some of you are panicking. Please put in chat. People only panic when there is no plan in place. People only panic when there is no plan in place. So when you have a generational instance like this and another one possibly coming in 27 and then the great reset that is going to happen, you have to be willing to take advantage of these. So look at these as a, a inside conversation that I would have with my son um, on what I would tell him exactly what to do. So let's go to some news items really quick. Um, and I'll say this. You only want to get out of companies right now if you got in at a bad price or you don't actually believe in them. When the market is bleeding down this much, it shows you if you truly and actually believe in a company. Tonight, I want you to write a lot of stuff down. Okay. Rivian falls apart. So remember last week when I was saying, hey, there is no new Tesla. There is no new Apple, no new Microsoft when people are hunting for these companies. And if you follow the process, like I've told you to look at Andreessen Horowitz and the top venture capital firms, the top angels, you can see which companies are coming down the pipeline that could change the world right now. We don't have too many of my entrepreneurs. I'll tell you. The world is waiting for you to create an amazing company that changes the world forever and you will become a billionaire if you do so and get the right funding and right team behind you. But Rivian falls apart. And when people are trying to be the second and third player in the EV space, this is why it's best to go with the top player and leave everything else to the side, okay? Um, of course, SPY and triple Qs are falling. The Dow is falling. But if you are able to trade or short term invest, like we talk about on episode 70 and previous episodes here on Market Monday, you should be making a killing. Shout out to my guy, P. P hit a big target in less than three or four minutes. So traders write this. I should be making more money doing crashes than ever before. Please put that in chat. 30 year mortgage rates have risen to the highest rate since 2009. So those of you remember when I told you a housing crash will come, this is a little bit of a delayed indicator. Um, and it's a delayed reaction. The housing market turns over a lot slower than the stock market. 
but by next year I, I think we will have a housing crash um and i want to take a look at these crude levels so write this down every time that you look at a commodity or an asset you want to look at least 50 years out so if you look at here 19 is mid 1980s excuse me uh 1987 crude for this chart slid negative look at the area here pre-2000 slid negative 2010 slid negative 2018 and 2020 those are the areas in which you want to buy oil and when we see these tops at 50 every time these happen according to jim not every recession is led by a 50 percent rise in crude but every 50 percent rise in crude has led to a recession in 1990 we see it was really bad so when you look at the macro picture you can easily tell when commodities are going to fall apart the truth is too many people are looking at too short of a time frame and it's damaging your account by doing so so here are the 29 lessons i would tell my baby xander of what to do to take over in a massive fortune in a recession number one you have to build an investment strategy that works in all market conditions write this down if it does not work in the up market down market and sideways market it is not good enough it is not good enough Number two, you have to be able to trade every market with it. Write it down. Commodities, equities, index, index funds, mutual funds, every commodity and tradable asset on earth, including something like this water, you have to be able to trade. Now, if you are long-term investing only and you don't know how to short-term invest, like I talked about on episode 70, please check it out. Classic should have went triple. You are at risk. And I'm just going to be honest. If you don't know how to trade during a down market, you're missing one of the greatest opportunities of your lifetime. Number three, for my baby Xander, please listen to me. Do what you love and focus on what you love. But you have to, one, invest long term first. You got to put 70% of your money away until you're 30. Not the little secret, no kids until you're 30. Okay. Number two, you have to have real estate in some form. So whether on the consumer side, where people are renting from you to live, or on a commercial capacity, whether it's in uh, what Uncle Ty is doing or um, some form or fashion where it's commercial, whether it's hotels, et cetera, but you need to have real estate in your portfolio. Number three, you have to have eight businesses that require almost no human capital. Ideally, baby, you want businesses that run and you don't need anyone but yourself and automation tied to it. Number four, you have to have some set software components that you own in your business that will allow you to scale faster and infinitely quicker than everybody else that you're competing against, okay? Number five, you need a tech company as well. And then the last one, um, you have to build one business that you see will be viable in 10 years that everyone may not see the value in right now, you only want to get out of an investment in the bear market if you do not believe in a company or you got in at a bad price. So Xander, if you're holding for your lifetime, a 30 year period, and you want to pass things down to your children's children, what you should be doing is buying at the best prices, only loading a boat. And if it's at a 80% off discount or 90% off discount, you want to put 85% of your money there and a remaining capital you can place at other places like 50% if it's going back up. But you should only want to get out of a company in a bear market if you no longer believe in it or because you got in at a bad price. Um, next, please write this down. You must laser focus for two years straight to have breakout momentum. Most will not sacrifice going out for two years and sitting on their ass and grinding to build something. So, baby, right now, what I want you to do, because I know you want to build your YouTube, the next two years. Just focus on being the greatest version of you and the greatest creator and letting that show on camera for two years straight. I'm going to be honest with you. I was going to save it to the end. But the discipline that you exhibit today will determine the amount of dollars that you have in the future. And if I'm looking at the landscape, because everybody in your era wants instant gratification because of social media, which is the greatest digital pimp ever created, you can destroy and beat everyone in your class for the next 50 years if you're more disciplined than those you are competing against. Okay? Because then I know you like to win. Thank you, guys. Right? 
<laughs> um, the blueprint number number one. Read five hours a day, and I know it may get tiring, but read while you're watching, while you're playing the game, while you're talking to your friends, squeezing that reading time because all of your edge, your moats, the intellectual assets that you'll gain, and knowledge that you'll know off the back of uh, on top of your brain, will come from all the work that you've put in. Number two, study the top 50 stocks in the United States market. Study the top 300 stocks immediately after internationally. Read the top publications from hedge funds and scientists to know what's going on in the world. And listen to two podcasts per day so you're able to get an informational edge on everyone. And if you do that in the main sectors of business, science, capital, and global politics, you will have an edge that no one else has. Now, when it comes to trading, I only want you to take 10 to 20 trades a year. If you get to a point where your profit factor or your win percentage is higher than 90%, so your profit factor, I want to be 90 or higher, like mine and Uncle P's, right? Or your win percentage is 90% or higher, you can take as many trades as you want. As soon as you go down to 89, I want you to only get 10 trades in per year. But this is how you're going to deal with the emotional aspects of trading. Number one, you are going to focus on a long target only. It's a huge mistake to scalp or go for shorter targets because if you hit 10 big targets, you've done the work and gotten the capital in that you need for three or four years. You want your money to work for you and you not work for it. Practice every single day. Love this. Have fun. Enjoy. But especially in a down market, you will never be without money if you're able to produce results and generate capital for me or a fund or your friends or maybe you and uh, Ryan from Toy Ryan Toy Reviews can team up and put $20 million in that account and you grow up to $50 million in two months, right? Next, you want to feel worthy of money. So Xander, I want to tell you right now, I'll, every night I want you to say, I am worthy of all the money in the world. I am all worthy of all the money in the world. So when I'm telling you, to say your affirmations, baby, that I'm amazing, I'm happy, I'm loving, I'm smart, I'm handsome, right? I know you get mad when I tell you to say it, but it does breach your confidence. And one of the biggest hangups that adults have is that they have a feeling that they're not worthy of the money that they truly wish for. And you are. And if you say these affirmations every night, as you become an adult, you won't sabotage. You won't amass money and give it away through divorce or reckless spending or bad habits right because what's the point of becoming wealthy and giving it away and yes you can buy your black lamborghini after you hit some of these targets but i want you to feel that you're worthy and most importantly do not deviate from the schedule a deviation is the art of sabotaging yourself but being mad at the world for your failure i want you to say i will not deviate from my plan no matter what happens to me Right now, NASDAQ, 5% of stocks are down 90%. 27% of stocks are down more than 75%. When stocks are down 75% to 90%, it is telling you what the real value of those companies are. Pick the four that matter the most and do everything in your power to get 10,000 shares as a way for freedom. And ultimately, you want to get between 150 and 500,000 shares in your possession so you can have generational wealth. Next, risk can be hedged through long, short, and absolute return investing on the use of derivatives designed for that purpose. That's an amazing quote by Joe Greenblatt. So when the market is falling apart, find the products like futures that will pay you. There'll be a ton of commodities that you can trade. And the ones that you should trade, one, write this down, baby, have the highest volume of the futures traders. So you want the volume to be in the top 15 and you want them to have at least 15 years worth of data. New products I want you to stay away from because if you stick to the products that have high volume and you have a great amount of data, your strategy, your algorithm, and your discretionary trading will work better and then you can have heaven on earth and spend time on this island here. I want to show you a really quick way how to know what the risk factor of a company is. So if you come to quiverquant.com and you scroll down, let's type in a company. We all know Apple. 
and we enter in the data here. You can scroll down and it'll tell you. So it's done the work for you in this example. COVID-19 uh, has had and continues to have a significant impact around the world, prompted governments and businesses to take unprecedented measures and responses, right? So if you scroll through here, and the great thing is Apple doesn't have many. Uh, let's go to, let's see, Lucy, Lucy didn't pop up. Let's go to GE. whatever one that gives us. Let's go to AA. And then you can see that it'll list the number of risks that a company has. Know what the risks are or when you do your SWOT analysis, what the weaknesses are in a company, but know what the risks are because that would determine if it will be a top five investment for you. If it has more than five major risks in this category, you really don't want to invest in it. And you want to identify what are the best prices for the best companies and baby focus on the top five. I know everyone's going to tell you something different, but trust me, focus on the top five and mark off where the 80% offline is. You want to put majority of your capital there. 90% is great, but not every great company is going to get there for a top two company, top three company of that decade. 50% may be the area, but that's the formula. Everyone's going to ask you. And for those of you who are listening, how do I know when to invest? When it's 90% off, when it's 80% off. And if you're looking at a 10 year chart and it's off 90% off of its highs and it still has great value. If you're holding it for 10 years, but the biggest issue is baby, the most people Sander will not hold for a long period of time. You won't make that mistake. So remember when we were talking, you're like, but I want to have money and I want to do different kind of careers and jobs but i don't want to have to just do one this is the blueprint to be able to get you there because then you can take this cash and then you can borrow against this liquidity from these stocks at a low interest rate and even in a high interest rate environment the loan shouldn't be more than three and a half to four percent and then you can live potentially off of that loan pay that money back and still have your stocks available a good way to know if we are at a high value place where the market could drop is the Wilshire versus GDP calculation. And I'll show that to you. So this is the Buffett indicator. You can find it on longtermtrends.net. I have no relationship or affiliate partnership with them. But in these levels down here, so this gray line is the mean or where it should average out at. When we're sub the mean, almost 50%, you want to load up heavy here. This is 2008. So if you look in 2020, we were still really high. We we're still really high. We was at 124%. When it got to 20, excuse me, 200%, we were going to start to see some tapering. And we talked about this before on Market Mondays. And I'm looking at all the data. But even if you go over 30 year period, you can kind of see 2007 was here. 2009 was here. We were overinflated. So anytime we start to hit these major levels, 150%, 200%, that's when you're going to know to start tapering off. Also, too, if you look at what the all-time highs are, especially if there's no quantitative easing, you want to start to ease up. So on a decade-by-decade decade basis, when this is underneath the mean, so sniper, same with the EMA, you would be... So let's say you got into 2003, right here. You've been great to 2007, you would have went under... Let's say you would have re-entered back in in 2011. From 2011 through now, you would have had tremendous gains. This is all about playing the long-term game and having a strategy. But if you look at this Buffett indicator, it'll give you an indication for when you should be buying and when you should stop the taper off. So when it gets to 150, 200, 250, you want to stop your buying. That's not the best place to buy. You want to buy low down here and then exit potentially at a high the next lesson is you want to invest more during low interest rate eras or when there's extreme quantitative easing like it was in 2008 through 2022 and be selective when rates are higher so if interest rates are incredibly high stocks won't give you or companies won't give you as great of a return so go not only do you want to 
buy low and sell high. You want to buy heavier when interest rates are at a lower rate opposed to when they're at their peak. Okay. It's easy to make returns on 0% capital loaned to you. How many, if I, if I gave you a million dollars, somebody gave you a million dollars at 0% and say, Hey, you can pay back when you want to. You can make, if you can find a way to make money off the million, right? That's how the housing market was and stock market was. And now the interest rates are going up. It changes the dynamic a little bit. When trading, next lesson. If you're going long and you don't want to get prematurely stopped out, put your stop at the bottom of the current low of the day only if the trend is green. Xander, I know you're going to listen to this. I don't know about everybody else. But put your stop at the bottom of the market so you don't prematurely get whipped out only if the market is then going upward. Green means up, red means down, right? And then if you're short in the market and the market is red, put your stop at the top of the market so you don't get prematurely whipped out of your move when you're shorting. Exercise discipline in every trade. Don't deviate. Don't adjust your stop. Once you lock in profit, get up, walk away. You can hit your targets, make the monies you need and be incredibly happy. Next lesson. You have to learn to love the speed of the downtrend of NASDAQ and Dow when the market is crashing. So, yes, your long term portfolio may be getting beat up, but don't look at it. And your short term portfolio, you should be able to take advantage of these waves. And if the market is consistently moving down, if you're trading to the downside with it, it should offset the losses that you're having in your, in your long-term portfolio. There's a group of safety stocks that you're going to be able to invest in, Xander. So normally, pharma is going to be one area you can invest in, and you put these together. One is going to be tech, two is technology. So pharma, a te top technology company, a top retailer, and then a top consumer good company. So... In times of stress right now, if you need four more to invest in, a company like Eli Lilly would be really good, right? And then if you need a top technology company, I'm going to lean on Apple or whatever the number one brand is at the time. Uh, number three, if you need a top grocery or retailer, I will go with Costco, Walmart, or Target, but I like Costco a lot. And if you need a top consumer good company, I would lean on Procter & Gamble. Next lesson, you need to read the top 10 books in every industry and the top 100 books of all time. Most people don't have an edge in business because they don't have enough intellectual data at their fingertips. And even if you're feeling tired, Xander, squeezing two pages a day. But if you learn something from every industry, so learn some from mom in the medical field and some from me in investing in business and some from grandpa in business and construction, right? If you learn a little bit every day, it is going to make you a superhero intellectually. And as many times as I tell adults this, they don't listen, but I know that you will. Next lesson. New financial products are created when we're close to a collapse. So Bitcoin was created right around the time of the 2008 crash. NFTs were created around the time of this current crash. When there's stability in the market, there is not a need for new products in the ecosystem. When you see a bunch of products starting to pop up, it is because there's instability in the financial markets. Be careful in how you invest in them. Put 5% of your capital into them and test them out. Learn about everything. Don't ever turn any asset class away. But your allocation has to be set based on the ones that are going to give you the highest return with the least amount of drawdown or risk. The next lesson I need you to learn, the average time to recover in a bad crash is either 1,213 days or 2,500 days. And every month through each of those, if we go through an extended recession, I want you to invest every single month. Invest through the suffering. Next lesson, you have to use your day trading setup to get into your long-term positions. I don't want you trading. 90% of your money should go to long-term. But if you are able to use the setup, baby, that I gave you off the time frame that I gave you, you'll get some good entries into Tesla, Apple, Amazon, Google, AMD, Procter & Gamble, Lilly, etc. And you'll be fine. 
I said it before, but you need 10,000 shares for freedom for yourself. And ideally throughout your life, by the time you're 40, you want to have 150,000 to 500,000 shares of top companies for generational wealth. So during the 1929 depression and crash, um, John Templeton bought 100 shares of every company trade that traded for less than a dollar, um, which is a company's almost bankrupt. And I would adjust that for now. I would do in this era a thousand shares in the top four industries that have fallen 90% from their all, all time highs that are older than five years old. If you can get them between 80 to 90% off and get a thousand shares and just load the boat and hold for a 20 or 30 year period, you'll be okay. And this is the matrix that you have to be invested in by the time you're 25. You have to have index funds, tech stocks. You have to be investing in businesses and companies and angel investing, venture capital, private equity. You have to flat out, outright, outright acquire companies, either small or mid-sized businesses. You have to know the top 20 commodities and how they trade and fluctuate because there may be a gap that you're able to trade or invest in that would give you a ton of money. You have to master short-term investing, and I know you'll do incredibly well at that. And then you have to focus on one thing that you love to do and tie them all in together. That's why I always tell you, I don't care what you want to do for your career. I want you to do what you love, but you can tie these things in and be free and not have to deal with politics or opinions or not go to the meetings you don't want to if you are heavily invested into the companies that are there to pay you. You want to take your dollars and make your money make more money babies so you don't have to waste or spend your time doing things you don't want to last lesson i want you to know is that investors and traders like or uh, hate uncertainty in the market so uncertainty creates volatility volatility creates risk risk creates fear fear then causes selling Selling causes losses, and then when uncertainty ends, the bull market returns. This is why I tell you entrepreneurs, every company right now, Angel and Venture is looking for the next big thing. We have to solve some real problems to get to some real money. We don't need another social media app. And the last thing, uh, Xander, um, a lesson from Templeton, buying at the point of maximum pessimism is critical to investment success. And I would only say you want to invest in a company when it's most pessimistic, but it has to be a quality top 10 company. And when everyone's saying, no, this isn't going to work and this crash is going to be different than others, that's when you want to put the majority of your money in. And when you finally get married, I want you to follow this Pleasant principle. Um, kudos to Dr. Pleasant. I want you to take one income and solely invest all of that for a 15-year period. It's one of the easiest formulas ever to become a millionaire. If you are married to someone, both incomes should not go to bills. One should go to investing and one should go to taking care of the household stuff. Now, baby, by the time you get married, you should be well off. But I still want you to follow these rules. And lastly, you can beat 99% of people in the world and be one of the most dominant and financially free people ever just by following your plan and not deviating. I love you dearly. Recessions, depressions, crashes are a chance to build wealth like no other time. And with this great reset happening, if you don't know, learn how to invest short term and long term, you are setting yourself up to be susceptible to whatever they choose to do with you financially. You have to be able to produce profit at all costs in any markets, and no one is going to have sympathy if you cannot. And those are the top lessons I would give to my child forever and to you. Let's review 50 stocks real quick, and we can get on with the show. Um, but if you like these lessons, please put yes in chat. If I made you money, please put yes in chat. And for those of you that are parents, share these lessons with your kids. So they are not learning late. We have to start catching our babies at three, four, and five years old and not wait until they're 15 or 18 to teach them about money. Even if you don't have it, teach them early because they deserve that. 
I love you all. Let's review these stocks. Um, so I know you're tired of me always talking about Apple, Microsoft. Great. So let's review some that we haven't talked about before in a couple of different markets. So this is Polymetal International. First thing I'm going is to is a five year. Had a little bit of a pop, right? But if we're looking at the trend of Polymetal, is this a good investment? No. Um, pink sheet company, not a lot of value. So even though you may see things pop up on your screen, doesn't mean you want to invest them. Let's look at this next one. So we can see here, apron is at three bucks and 30 cent. If we go back a little bit in time, we can see it was at 165 and it's been falling. I don't think apron is going to recover and do anything uh, amazing in this time frame. Let's look at DDO. Yes, everything has been falling, but which I want to see is some companies have a uptrend during some of this meltdown in the market. So if we look at Lily, Lily high was 314. It's currently at 289.23. It's slightly on a, on an upturn, and it hasn't dropped down and lost 30 or 50 or 80 percent of its value in a year, and definitely not over a five year period. The, please write this down. I still want to see the market go up and to the right on a five year month chart, even during a bear market let's look at integrated media technology imte no previous high back in 2018 was 44 it's the same thing i told you guys before if the all-time high is not within the last year i do not want to touch it let's look at sgly same trend you may be able to trade some of these but i would not hold them for investment seed s-e-e-d said seven dollars and 68 cent it was at two dollars and 76 cent in 2020 it went up to 28 and fell apart. No, real companies will hold their valuation even through a bear market. Let's look at Lumen Technologies. Five year high was $27.61 instead of 11 15 No, if it got to four bucks, maybe on a swing trade, but I do not like this one at the moment. VNDA, same thing. And write this down. A lot of companies, if it not has not had a new high in the last year, you can just eliminate it. So this one, uh vnda i wouldn't touch it just because it hasn't had a new high now if the financials of the company changed maybe vizio no previous high was 28 it is now at seven dollars and 98 cent no no go um skyh so this is when when you're reviewing the market and you're looking at two three hundred stocks you're going to see that most companies are not providing enough value for you to actually put your money there and the question I always love to ask is, if your life was on a line, would you invest in a company? Most people never even heard of Sky Harbor Group Corporation. These are class A shares. No slight to them. But no, in an OX. So the previous high was $94.81. It's at $9.05 now. Nano X Imaging. No. So when I, this is what I'm really doing when I'm doing my review of the market. I'm looking to see, has the company continuously gone up? To the right and then after it's gone up to the right am i then able to buy somewhere on a low this company is nowhere near where it should be so i want my companies to go up and to the right and then take a dip i can buy here and then it goes back to the upside this company is not doing that i do not want to touch that prm downside huge downtrend these are monthly candles for those of you that may ask BTTX, same thing, no go. Better ther therapeutics. Uh, let's take a look at space, SPCE. Hit a high of 62 bucks and 80 cent, then set $6 and seven cent now. The previous low before that was 753. This is why I tell you, if something has hit a bottom before, it's usually gonna come back and break that bottom if it's not an amazing company. So everyone who was missing out and thought SPCE was gonna be the greatest investment ever, you didn't miss out on a damn thing if you waited 12, 13, 14 months, right? Um, let's look at EIGS. Oh, EIGR, my apologies. Iger, Biopharma, Biopharmaceuticals, don't love it. It's okay. BR, BR. These are decent trades. If you can trade, and you trade stocks and maybe this will be some of the ones you can trade but or swing trade but i wouldn't put this in my long-term portfolio i want to be very clear on it 
E-H-T-H. No. Uh, and let me see really quick what the 20 years on this one. Yeah, so this is Eat Health Incorporated. If it got back and broke this low of $6.38 and it went to like $6 flat, I wouldn't mind touching it there. So when I'm saying, hey, I want things that are 80 to 90% off in the lessons I was giving Xander, uh, for a company that is not amazing quality, I want to wait till it goes to that previous low. Um, I still would probably swing trade it. I would not hold it for long term. And the truth is most companies don't produce any real value because the economy is hurting. Um, SKT, I don't like OEC. This one isn't bad. It's not incredible. Um, at 593. So let's say if this is the top, this is the bottom, this is the middle, maybe somewhere around here. So $7.05. I would maybe want to buy it here if I'm looking for a swing trade. Any other place than that, I wouldn't want to touch it. By this time, if you've done enough research in the market, you should be able to eye where your indicator would be. So this, so this is the high. Once again, you can just literally, and, and if you're trading it, is do it with a marker, right? So this is the high, this is the low, this is the middle, and put literally X is the only place I want to buy. What do most people do? Okay, I want to buy here at 20 because I think it's going to go up. And then it slows back down and goes back to 750 where I said it would go. And you're like, man, hey, can I talk to you? Can you help me out? And I'm like, where did you buy at 20? Why did you buy at 20? I thought it was going to go up. FLO. I actually, flower foods, not bad. This would be a pretty safe swing trade. So if um, it got back down here to like 2448, I would probably want to do a swing for two or three bucks on this. The low back in 2002 was $2.40. Not bad. Um, yeah, that would be a decent swing, swing trade. So you have to find opportunities. Uh, society pass, you can see this is a definitely a no-go. You have to look and search for opportunities that are there. Let's go a little bit faster. Uh, BGS. I don't like a lot. That's BNG Foods. CYN. Put this in chat. My entire job is to hunt for the best stocks and investments on NWS is news media. It's the five year chart. I don't like to invest in media companies. They don't give the best return. KMT. Okay. SFM. Okay. eBay. Uh, let's go with some JP Morgan. Let's go Ally Bank. Ally Financial. Allies held up pretty well. Um, GIS. G General Mills. Okay. General Mills is an example of they have not went down that much. They went down in March 61. Great. But they slowly been pushing up. These white candles means upward, mo uh, upward momentum. They've been doing pretty good. So General Mills, I would definitely put on my watch list. Let's look at Kellogg Company. Kellogg Company has done well. Put in chat why you think why. Uh, we got a couple more minutes before we shut down. RCII Rena Center. No, not so much. SPD. Expeditors International. Don't love. Let's look at BIG. Don't love. Clorox. Don't love. Bank of Montreal. What trend is this telling you? No, but let me. And this is a prime example. I'll end here. Why to look at the long term? Look at what. Okay. Have you ever even heard of Bank of Montreal? If you're in the United States of America and look at what this price was. For those of you listening, it was 11,554 bucks at the high. That was in 2018 is now at $81 and 15 No, no, no. Always go with true direction, study your asset over 50 years, look at the five year chart, find some all stars. And even out of this list, we went through out of 25, there were two or three maybe good companies, right? You only need really four good companies to have freedom. Pick your four. You don't have to like Apple, Microsoft. Great. V O V T I. Great. What does your drawdown look like though? Once again, process matters. And that is what leads to profit. I love you. I hope this helped, but it is on you to execute and not deviate from the damn plan because you, like my son, 
are worthy of all the money and all the freedom in the world that you want. I love you. And he finishes off like go. the champion he is. There you go. A letter to my son. That was a love letter. That was that was amazing. Thank you. I was like, that was Ian's project window right there. Looking out of my project <laughs> window. Hey. That was fire, bro. Had to switch it up. Yeah, yeah, it's been a minute. Yes, it was very uh, very soothing. Very soothing. <laughs> And for those of you in the comment who are like, hey, I don't like the music, the music that you listen to don't make you any money. That's a Drill don't make you no money. The artists y'all like and listen to, they don't make any money. This is a prime example of focusing on the wrong thing. Focus yeah. on results only. How many shows and interviews y'all missed? Not a one. Focus on the info. Our culture... And I love what Key said. Got to kill the current state of what the culture is. Focuses on the wrong thing. Commentary and jokes. Most comedians outside of 85 South and Chappelle ain't making no money. Let's focus on the things that matter. Yeah. And it's common too, man. What, what that does too to the brain is like it's a common sound. So when you're thinking about mm -hmm. investing and you're studying investing, it'll make you a calm investor, a patient investor. And make you patient. Which is really what you want patience pays or you can be frantic and play all the drill you want and your account gets drill 30 <laughs> clip in your account 30. <laughs> you pick bang 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 <laughs> go ahead account getting drill like that <laughs> we running with that yeah vix hit the ass with that chopper 45 make my pants sack <laughs> yeah yeah try to bring hey. the humility back what we want yeah, I get the black jacket. And take this off. That's what I smoke, man. Yeah. Divergence in character and personality. I'm learning. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh man! They put it in. Mike, Mike clip that up. up. <laughs> See? Hey, and that's the crazy part. We ain't had 25 times to sit down and do the show. Well, we take this on the road and, and sink in, boy. We're going to be looking like in sync back in the day. Bell Bill DeVoe or something. <laughs> Bell, Bill, ready. Oh, man. The next oh. four moves. <laughs> boy. Oh, nature troller, boy troller. Shout, Flair. shout out to Drake. That's always an option. Oh, yeah. What happened? <laughs> Trizzy? I'm here for you. <laughs> shout out to Trizzy, man. Legend. Dr I'm here Drake for you. is different. I'm here for you. <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. Let's get some uh, some some trending topics. Um, okay. So this this uh, Joe Biden capital gain story. I don't want to call it Joe Biden because I feel like that's kind of politicizing it. It's more Treasury Department, but it is you know obviously he's the president, so falls on his shoulders. Um, mm -hmm. This is interesting. I read this article this morning that this is going to be a, a record breaking year for tax revenue. Um, just short of three trillion dollars. Yep. What a tree. What a what a tea. What a tea. What a tea. What a tree. I got shout, you. Funny. Shout out to Bird. Shout out to Birdman. Mm -hmm. um, that was your bad talk coming out. He would be very proud of me. <laughs> um, and uh, a portion of that, a pretty sizable portion of that, is short-term capital gains tax. So this is where the plot thickens because you know everybody was going crazy with uh, you know. Day trading last year. Of course, we had the mean stock situation, short-term options. Um, and a lot of people didn't realize that they would have to pay hefty tax bills up to 37% on short-term capital gains. So, you know, a lot of people were saying like, you know, everybody's making money on options. The government's going to regulate it. Well, maybe not. Maybe not. If they have a record-breaking year of revenue and people are, you know, paying. And then, mm -hmm. like I said, most of the time, people doing short-term trades actually lose. So if you're losing, then Wall Street's making money. The, bro the broker's making money. Yeah. yeah. So it's a win-win. It's a win-win. If, win if Wall Street wins, if you lose, the government wins, if you win. Yeah. What can you do? So short-term capital gains, how can that affect your account negatively when looking at long-term, you know, wealth building? Uh, what's the balance between short-term trading and long-term investing? How do you, how do you feel about this? 
Yeah, I mean, any any investment that I make, you know, if there's a gain, I'm automatically like, all right, forty percent of this is gone mm-hmm. off the rip, right? That's if I'm thinking it's going to be short term. That's why I tell people like, if we're going to do something. Make sure it's a year and a day, a year and a day. And I'll, I'll get into a little story about how that actually benefited me when we get into some of these other topics. But you have to have these things in mind. That's part of the plan. So like when Ian's saying it, and he's saying it in a very calming voice, but he's re- being very repetitive about it. It's like stick to your plan know your plan part of that plan especially if you're investing lump sums of money is to make sure that you have it in for more than a year and a day so that you can actually see the profits of what you've made right you don't want to have to all right well i made a hundred thousand but it was within six months and now 40 percent of that's gone now i'm down to 60 but i'm still investing the other 60 and that loss is now i gotta pay taxes and where am i gonna get the money from now you're broke but you thought you had actually made positive gains and so taxes are part of it. Knowing tax codes and tax structure are a very important part of investing. And so make sure you keep that in mind whenever, whenever you're making a decision that involves money and investing in capital gains. Yeah. And I would say this, ideally it's always good to wait for a year and a day, but sometimes, it, sometimes you just got to get out. Sometimes, you know, you pay the, you pay the cost to be the boss, but it's like, if you feel confident and you made, you know, the money that you said you was going to get in to make, yeah, you could potentially wait and, you know, not have to pay any tax, well, pay less taxes, mm-hmm. or you could potentially mm-hmm. wait and lose every everything that you had just trying to wait it out for a year and a day. So, you know, that's something to keep in mind. I think that the year and a day is a good goal, but even bigger than that is have your, have your percentage goal. Mm-hmm. And even that could change depending on the stock market, the economy, different things. So you just got to, you know, when you, you got to really focus on your investments, especially when you're, when you're doing short-term trading or swing trading, um, you know, just be careful, be mindful and uh, yeah, definitely pay your taxes. Yeah. And that goes part of being a plan, right? So if you know the percentage goal is the goal, then that's part of, that's in your plan. If I get, if I have a 30% return and that happens within a month or within two months, then I'm getting out. But that's part of the plan. You see what I'm saying? And so it goes, it's back to that like early on. So we got a lot of newcomers to market money's tuning in. And so one of the first things we said when you're investing is like, before you enter any position, know where you're going to exit. And so whether it's going to be a percentage, right, whether it's going to be a time distance, know where you're going to exit. And so, again, part of the plan, but having taxes as in part involved in that planning is vitally important. You don't want to actually have a gain and realize that you have you can't pay or pay the taxes on it. It's What's another it reason why I tell people to go for longer targets because whatever the financial target is that you hit. A lot of it's going away anyway. Going back to the scalping conversation that we had last week. Um, and the thing with, with trading and investing, everything, if I can be just brutally honest, the people that succeed the most are the ones who don't adjust the plan at all. And I understand getting out if you think a move is going to break down, but your life is a hell of a lot easier in every scenario if you just let your targets run for a long period of time. I know you people may need a confidence booster. I'm not mad at that. But when, I, when I'm saying, hey, stick to a plan and not change, all these factors are baked in to why. Shout out to the snipers and people in Red Panda that have hit that Holy Trinity target three or four times in a week. And they're like, man, I've been practicing since last August. And now it's paid off tremendously. Now, post taxes, you still have a big gain that you can be happy about. Do not deviate at any cost. And uh, Troy texted me, Bitcoin hit 29000 Shout out to Ally. That happened. The crystal ball. That happened. Right. <laughs> he doesn't know crypto. Okay. Yeah, that actually 20, happened at while. 21,000 we the next. So you all right. You said 29,000 was a good buy point. So should people be buying at 29,000? Or is yeah, it gonna keep buy, going? It's going well, if we can't continue this downward pressure, we're going to the price that I said a couple months ago. What was it? 29,000. 20. 20,000? So we're going to 20. Okay, so twenty thousand Bitcoin retracement to twenty thousand. Might clip this up. <laughs> I'll be wrong. I don't even care about being right no more. I'm just gonna skip. Look, look, my name was my name. <laughs> Tell him my name was my name. I'm just asking a question. I was asking a question. I no, no, no. That, 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 that's, that's not true. <laughs> that's not for you. No, that's not for I'm you. No, I'm saying. saying I, no, I was just oh, you actually want? Yeah. Okay. No, I was oh, yeah, asking. Yeah. Is twenty. Is that what you're saying? Twenty thousand. Yeah, the institutional level is between. 19,735 to 21 flat is a, is a very good area to load up at 29 is probably the second best area. Those are safe. 
All right. Yeah, yeah. So we hit that. Well, we, we had tw- well, we at twenty nine right now. We are so. there to currently at twenty nine. Twenty nine thousand for Bitcoin. Um, interesting times we're in. Yeah. Last week we were at thirty eight. Now we're at twenty nine. Three weeks prior we were at uh, forty. So we'll see where this is headed. At the same time, Ethereum is at twenty two hundred. Uh, and so. As, as, let's talk about the yeah Ethereum is down to all right. Let's talk about the S and P five hundred down almost a thousand points from its high. Yeah, fifty two um, week low. Fifty two week low at thirty nine hundred. Yeah. Um, you know, some people I was watching CNBC. Some people say thirty eight hundred is a good is a good level. Yeah, it's been falling. The stock market as a whole has been falling, but the S and P is probably the best judge of the stock market because it's 500 companies from all different areas so it's a very broad range um you know perspective on the stock market where the dow jones is a lot more narrow and the nasdaq uh-huh. is even more specific because it's just four tech companies so all right s p 500 will it continue to keep falling absolutely unequivocally I feel like tea today Yes, well, but, but because if there, there, there's no reason to, I know in a podcast, I should probably elaborate, right? Um, <laughs> and, and, <laughs> Use your words. Talk. Y'all know, right? <laughs> um, if quantitative easing has went away and all the easy wins are now gone, that's why I told everyone last year, study 2015, 2008, 1990, 1991, to see what those conditions were like when higher interest rates were there. For those of you that did the homework and studied the past seven recessions, how long due to interest rates going up, how long should we be in a bear market? You should know the number of days. It's not a guess. It's a range that we will be in. So until, so even with a chip shortage, that will end roughly summer of 2023. We'll see some relief there. Probably by fall of this year, September, we'll start to, push back up and stabilize. But yeah, for the next, through the summer, it's going to be a little bit treacherous. But, but if you want to know what this market is going to be like, look at 2015 and 2010 and 2009. It'll tell you, if you study, what the market is going to look like for sure. Is there something that could signal, maybe not even a reversal, but some sort of uptrend? Maybe, I mean, obviously with China being locked down right now uh, to Corona, if we saw something like China reopening on a global scale, could that be the, like one of those signs that there could be a, a, a nice tick up or a nice a that slight would de- rebound? That would definitely help. And companies that are mid cap companies like the Russell 2000 to start to go up. Because without Apple and Microsoft, we would be in a big bear, big ass bear market. Luckily, we have those. Now, as far as where the S&P is going to go, yeah, we should go to 3703. Yeah, there you have it. Yeah, and a lot I've seen a lot of analysts, even with the S and P being at a fifty-two week low. I watched a lot of analysts today. They're still keeping their their price target for the year at fifty-one hundred. Some people at it at fifty-two hundred. No budging on that. So we we will see. Hopefully, not even hopefully. We we shall see if they're right. We shall see. I hope so. But it's looking scary. It does look scary. It does look scary. Um, it could get worse. It definitely that's, can. That's, well, there you go. Definitely could. No, 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 no. No, I got to plug oh. my battery before <laughs> okay. we die. Okay. Uh, yes, it could definitely. Well, first of all, 6,900 people on YouTube. Hit the like button. Please hit the like button. Appreciate um, y'all. It absolutely can get worse because we're not technically in a recession yet. The only uh, only um, index that out of those major three that's actually in recession well, bear market territory is NASDAQ. Right. NASDAQ down like 25%. But, yep. um, neither the Dow Jones or S&P has reached 20% um, pullback yet. Yeah, I think mm-hmm. S&P's at 15%. So it's still yeah. not a bear market technically. And we're still not... It, the economy itself can get a lot worse. There's still yeah. a lot mm-hmm. more room for the economy to get worse. Yeah. So yeah. if the economy can get worse, then obviously the stock market can get worse as we, well. We won't used to say like, wait, the market doesn't match the economy. I remember when during the pandemic, we're like, wait, with these jobless claims and all these things happening in the economy, we're like, wait, why is the market still going up? And then finally, I feel like we're at a point now where it's like the economy and the market are, are matching. On. They're matching each other now, yeah. right? Like, yeah, as this should. is happening. Inflation, interest rates going up. 
This is what happens when you cheat. Now, I would never will want to sit in that fed chair position. But when you have quantitative easing for so long, opposed to just letting things settle out and fall apart, this is what happens when you go on a 12-year run and you don't have any pullbacks and you don't let things settle. A lot of funding went to companies that were terrible companies. Like, remember the era after, like, 50, and then it was, like, uh, D4L, rest in peace, Shawty Low, but not his version. It was, like, Laffy. We're in a Laffy Taffy era of investing. All the companies that are trash, let them get washed out. Then companies that are really good and venture companies that are good and angel companies that are strong will invest in better technology. We're in 2022. As a kid, we don't have any flying cars, great healthcare, great tech company, and we have a whole bunch of social media apps that are remixes of Black Planet and Instant Messenger. What we expect? As a country, we've produced some of the shittiest companies in the last 20 years. What do we expect? What We're death we checking when, when, when Paul Rosenberg was up there. Shout, Shout out to Fable. Shout out to Rosenberg. Um, Peter Rosenberg or no, Paul Rosenberg? Paul Rosenberg. Eminem's oh. manager. Yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> so, okay. Lucian, don't be mad at me. Uh, you know. Shout out to Fable. Entertainment. Shout out to Fable. Legend. <laughs> Legend. <sighs> da, 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 da. So, <laughs> Jay Z, yeah. one of the greatest rappers of all time, mm-hmm. has one of the greatest lyrics of all time. It was actually the, the, the lyric we named our second podcast ever this lyric where he said, In anticipation for precipitation, stack chips for a rainy day. Mm-hmm. Very important. Very important. Cash mm-hmm. is still king. And um, in times of uncertainty, it's okay to be in cash until you're actually certain. The dollar is actually um, strengthened, very strong right mm-hmm. now. I think yep. a 15 year high for the strength of, a, of the dollar right now. The mm-hmm. dollar's in a good place right now. Nothing wrong with having money on the sideline until you're comfortable. Pay your and check, uh, I think that there's still some more room for the market to go down. Absolutely. Be patient. Be patient, have money waiting, and um, get in at good prices and just ride it up. I said, we're we going to play Belichick, man. We're going to win rings from the sideline. We're we, we going to watch the game. We're going to make moves at the right time. We're going to play Belichick. Shout out to all the Patriots fans. But that's that. I mean, he's right, right? If we know, if we've seen the market pull back, there's no need for us to keep investing large sums of money. We're going to watch it, keep our cash as king. And when we can make moves, we will. We will. And, and that song is from Rain, Umbrella. 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 Rihanna. Rihanna's first single. Uh, not her first mm. single. Her first big single. Pond the Replay is her first. Yes, Pond the Replay is the first single. Be her first big one. And her first single. But her that was the number, number one record. One, her first number definitely one. number one record. Her first number one record. It might not yeah. even be her first number one record, but definitely a big record. Big record. Yeah, big record. Uh, 2020, 2021, what was like the, the football era when like, Everybody got participation trophies. Right now it's 1970, hard nose, <laughs> helmet to helmet. Bust your ass football. Pittsburgh Steelers. Everyone put this in chat. Wait for the right price to buy the best companies. Knowing the information and doing it and waiting is dramatically different. Wait. And you could have seen this come. I said this over a year ago that I thought tech was overinflated. Most of, a lot of the tech companies was overinflated. A bunch of times. Um, I said it. A, pre- a lot. It's just you know you just kind of can see these things happen, and of course when what what comes up must come down. Mm-hmm. It's just it's just the the rules of life. And look how well Apple and Microsoft are holding that. Without Apple and Microsoft, we would be in two thousand eight all over again. Yeah. Which tells Maybe. you. The other 496 companies, well, let's say 490, are not producing profits at a rate that they should. The the lyric is not from Reasonable Doubt. It's from Umbrella with Rihanna. Like, I literally study rap. I've been studying rap my whole time. Somebody put it in Don't do that. Don't argue, JT. It's not Not from Reasonable Doubt. Not on this side of the table. It's from Umbrella with Rihanna. Trust me. Trust me on this one. Trust me. I'll do the whole song if y'all need it. Shout out to YouTube. 7,000 people hit the like button. Thank you and guys share. for being here. Hit the like. Yes. Great. Greatly appreciate it. It's not from Can I Live. These youngins. Oh, man. People. I'll be your whole hey, Jay. Rain Man is back with little Miss Rihanna. 
Come on, stop it. That's the next lyric. Stop it. Stop it. Apologize. At some point, I got to stop. Um, What option? Are there option trades that you like in this market? Yo, I'll give. Can I? I'm gonna give y'all one that, and we could have saw it coming Friday, Um, but we could have actually saw it two weeks ago. And that's Rivian. And Ian, I know I I texted to you earlier, but I'm like, yeah. Obviously, and, and people. This is what I'm talking about when you do your research and you actually like read the lines in between the lines. And so. Rivian, obviously, we saw with Amazon's earnings call that they lost $7 billion because they own 20% or 158 million shares of it. And so because Rivian's price had been going down, obviously, Amazon lost money because of their their ownership stake in it. So that was a sign number one. And I'm talking about a lot of times we talk about putting calls, but obviously, in any type of market, when we see a pullback like this, we can make puts on these type of situations and make money on the depreciation of the asset. And so that was sign number one. Side number two, and this was big, big news that kind of went under the radar. The stock mm-hmm. lockup period for Rivian ended, expired on Sunday. And so the stock lockup period is when early investors, when they put their money in, they have to stay inside of the company until a certain date. That mm-hmm. date was Sunday, this Sunday. And so what happened? Ford, who owns, uh, I think, 102 million shares, they decided that they want to sell some of their shares off so they sold about eight million shares there's yep. been a report that jp morgan has said that there is a a block of Rivian shares that they're saying 13 to 15 million that are about to be sold as well and so when you start seeing the lockup period and then people selling their shares that's telling you something right it's like when we talked about ceos selling shares to their company well why are they doing it mm-hmm. they're telling you something something's coming and so if we had looked at those two signs and then know that this week, and I'm talking about in the earnings report, Rivian is going to be reporting their earnings. And one of the things that they said was that they're going to have 25,000 vehicles made this year. Ford sells. There's a $15 million, 15 million shares sell that's about to happen. Amazon has lost money because of it. This would have been an opportune time to put a put on a company like Rivian Friday. Now, we saw today, obviously, what happened when the news broke that uh, Ford had did it. They went down another 10%. I think they were trading at $22 Friday or Thursday yeah. they were at $34. Yeah. And so a quick put on that with the generated income. And so we have to look at the signs, look at the sign. What, what did John Henry say? What was the quote he said? Know the difference between the noise and signal and the noise. noise. Signal, signal and the noise. And so those signals were going out. Those signals were going out. We kind of ignored it. And now it's like, oh man, I can make a put on it. Yeah, but it it's happened. Now their earnings are going to be coming out on Wednesday. And who knows? It could it could fall down even further. If, they don't meet any of the expectations that they put out. So these are the type of signals you got to look at and read in between the lines. Like, oh, okay, okay, there's a position there. Yeah. Yeah, I have it going so that, to that 1958. Was... Yeah, got it. My you bad. said he has it going to 1958? Yeah. 1958 for Rivian. Um, puts is when you are betting that the stock will go down. Yeah. Anybody that's... that doesn't know what a put is. Right. So that's how, so obviously calls are when we're, we're saying that the option, well, the equity is going to go up in value, puts it when we're saying it's going to go down in value. And so we saw the signs, the signals, really. Actually, I'm going to use that from now on. We saw the signals that there was going to be decline, but did we take action on it? So it's going to be a different once we. I told you signals, guys when it first came out, it was garbage already. Do we take action then? Yeah. Probably not. And even I would yeah. like, I could say, like, look, from a fundamental standpoint and having the, the truck itself, I'm like, all right, this could be something. Amazon's investing in it, all right, but they haven't delivered. And will it be great at some point? Maybe, it could be, right? But this is another one of those lessons, like something is, if it, it has to be proven before we can actually put investment money into it. It's another point that when we talk about, hey, why try to find the next thing when the best thing is here right now? And Absolutely. Keep going over it. Everybody Dre- wants to find the next thing and find the next thing. It's here. Elon Drake Musk is Tesla. Owns the company. Exactly. Rivian is McConan. Although we, we, might, we, might, we, might, we said Drake, we said Drake is, is Tesla. The, Rivian's is McConan. <laughs> Club going up hard. on a Tuesday. <laughs> stop stop buying trash and expecting it to be great. <laughs> that was a hard single. No, nah, it was legendary. That was a hard single. It was legendary. Well, down goes in. Um, and he's back. <laughs> <laughs> what stock do we uh, think has the best chance to recover from these lows? Um, if Art gets to twenty eight dollars and forty seven cent, wait, 
the infamous arc. 23, well, 2302. I think you're going to have a nice uh, bounce because the inflows are still heavy. I don't know how, but the that, inflows are. That, that's one of the most amazing stories. Mm-hmm. That, they had, I think it was, I, I saw a report, it was like 8 million share, 8.9 million like shares of, uh, of people that, that uh, people bought in the ARC ETF. Uh, mm-hmm. And that was in 2021. In 2022, at the same time with the price of the ETF dropping, right? At 47, the same amount of ownership. People are just holding on. Number one, all right, we, uh, people are like, all right, I lost enough. Like, how much more can I lose? But even still, the, some people probably sold off when it was up and people are buying in it now. It's, it's one of the most, I, I saw that uh, last week. I'm just like, this is really interesting. It has the yeah. same amount of ownership. Um, the power of great branding. Um, I have to give it to her. She's done a great job of, of in the face of adversity, not giving up on her thesis. Um, yeah, if it gets 22, I wouldn't mind taking a crack at it. Definitely a 1780. I would like it, but she has to start changing the way that she rebalances her portfolio. Oh, my bad. Why is my hand raised? Um, but yeah, that though that can bounce. Um, that's the only one that's gotten beaten that I would take a crack at and on a swing hope that it goes back to the upside. Yeah, we're talking about the ones that have dropped like 80, 90 percent. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Those. I mean, I, I, I'm still big on the semis. I think I saw AMD at eighty five dollars today or eighty seven dollars. I think obviously, you know, we got to know how we feel about those. I think uh, AMD and NVIDIA. NVIDIA mm-hmm. is a steal right now. Um, people are asking about Disney. I still love Disney. I'll talk about that in the earnings report. They're going to be reporting this week. Um, but yeah, I think those two for sure. Those two for sure. Um, and then Amazon, again, is taking a beat. It's, it's very close. I think tomorrow, if, if we have a day like today tomorrow, it's definitely going to be at its 52 week low. Um, and so, again, we got, we're about less than a month away from the, the split. Yeah. And so, well, the split is going to help them a lot. But yeah, it's going to help them. Yeah. For sure. If AMD gets to, 54 i'll be happy i'll say that i will load up there that one yeah i think google um oh, that's a good one yeah i think google another company that's splitting and uh, another company that's almost at its 52 week low um i think that they'll be fine and i think that they will rebound be a good long-term hole for sure you got the best pick of all that's a good one yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, let's 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 before we go. Uh, Troy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, how do we stay patient during this bloodbath? <sighs> the bloodbath for sure. Um, I, that's what I, it goes back to what we were saying earlier about having that plan. And so I'll give you an example of, of kind of what happened in my portfolio um this year. At the top of the year, I was thinking. Uh, long-term capital gains, um, sold a bunch of contracts at the top of the year, literally January 3rd, because I wanted to have all the money that was going to be accumulated be part of this year's taxes. Um, and so I had a lump sum of money just sitting on the sideline waiting for times exactly like this to say, all right, well, here we go. Now it's time to find your spots. And now can be, the thing is about the patience is like, I don't have to invest it right now. I can watch the, the market go a little bit lower. Do I have money invested? Am I losing money? Yeah, there's some positions that are down, but that I still have enough on the side to say, all right, I can enter, head some of these positions and actually put myself in other spots that can appreciate over long term periods. And so when we talk about the market pays those who are patient, that's literally what I mean. Find Mm -hmm. your spots, wait. Right. And it sounds crazy when we talk about, you know, it could pull back 30 percent, 40 percent until you see a a company like Peloton or even Coinbase, for example. Right. Coinbase is at eighty five dollars. At one point, it was at $400 last year, right? So we just got to stay patient. If we believe in the space, if we believe in the company, just stay patient, pick your spots. If you want to invest, put you don't have to put a lump sum in. You might want to put incremental amounts of money into the position. And then when it hits the spot that you really want to get it to, now, as Ian would say, you will load your boat. So have your plan, most, most importantly, stick to your plan. Try not to deviate, which is the toughest part. And I'm guilty of it too. Right. I'm guilty of it. I'm like, all right, there's a great opportunity here. And I see it on that day. And sometimes it doesn't work. Right. But I'm not 
putting all my eggs in that basket. I might put a small piece of, of money in and say, all right, well, let's see if this works. Bad on me, right? But I have, I'm learning those lessons as I'm doing it. I'm telling you right now. So patience, long-term will pay off. I've shown this to you at the Apollo. I showed it to you in Houston. And any other city we're going to go to, I'm going to yep. keep preaching that. The market pays those who are patient. So have a plan, stick to your plan. Try not to deviate, which is, like I said, is the very hard part. And look for signals, right? When those signals come, you got to execute on them. Yeah, and then block out the noise. And also, if you guys just listen to the information here, does it make sense now why I tell you guys to only have four long-term investments? Because if you, even with diversification, that is a trope told to retail investors so institutions don't have to give you a real answer. Diversification, go look at what the Buffett quote says. If you truly know what you're doing, you don't need diversification. You need hyper concentration into positions. Should not be down. General Mills is up. Great. Look at Target. Look at Costco. Uh, gentleman asking you two, why are we looking at 500 or 300 companies if we only invested in four or five? Because you want to know what the breakout ones will be in this time. Who would have thought that General Mills will be producing better return than, let's say, Spotify? Spotify is almost in the same boat as Evergrande with their investment strategy into podcasting. So if you're investing into a company that put a billion dollars up and has got no return, why do you think that stock is going to be profitable? No bueno. No bueno. I mean, yo, what you're saying is 1,000% correct. Like, think about those companies. Like, we think about Google and we think about Spotify and, these, and Peloton and mm -hmm. a lot of these companies. But, like, look at what Campbell Soup did. Like, yep. nobody saw about Campbell Soup. Yep. Look at, look at their six-month chart. Like, if y'all don't have the ticket, look it up. C-P-B. Look at Campbell Soup over the last six months. It's slowly moving up. Safety. <laughs> Safety. Safety. Yep. It's probably in your cabinet right now with an expiration date that was from six years ago. Stop playing yourself. But like nobody's talking about that. But these are the type of companies that are slowly gaining and are safe. Consumer stables. Yep. And, and no outlet or person is responsible for making you rich. This is why you have to do your own homework and find the ones that are out there. That's it. All right. Well, can we do an earnings report really quick? Yes. Let's do it. Let's do it. Rev Pan and family. YouTube. Earners, what's up? All right. So this earnings report is brought to you by Ally. All right. So we teamed up with Ally to help empower the next generation of creators, entrepreneurs, and leaders with financial ed education. Ally is helping us give away 20, that's right, 20 full-year scholarships to EYL University, where you can learn real-world skills to help you pursue your financial goals. So if you're a creator, entrepreneur, or someone who's trying to gain financial success, you have until Friday, June 3rd to submit. Here's what you got to do. Go to www.eyluniversity.com slash giveaway. Back, backslash, right? Yep. www.eyluniversity.com backslash giveaway to submit. All right. So Shadi and I are going to pick and announce five winners during each market Mondays up until June 3rd. Uh, because everything we do, we are all better off with the ally. Shout out to our friends at Ally for making this happen. And shout out to all y'all for submitting. We're going to announce mm -hmm. um, five winners every every Monday up until that point. So shout out to y'all. Good luck. And hopefully we see you on the other side of EYLU. All right. So we talk about some of those companies uh, and some that I'm actually investing in. We spoke about this for our, our kids. So Tuesday, tomorrow, Coinbase, uh, we will be, will be reporting uh, as well as Roblox. And Wednesday, Rivian, which we just spoke about, and Disney will be reporting. Um, and so I'm, oh, you know, anytime Disney report, I'm always interested in that. Um, I'm adding that to my thousand share club. I'm adding that to my thousand share club. Uh, the parks, uh, the international parks. I know the Paris one is open. Some of them are slightly open with regulations. I know the ones here, Disney World and Disneyland, are fully open, and attendance has been great. But streaming seems to be the, the king of what everybody wants to talk about. And so if those streaming numbers don't come back with some uh, substantial growth, uh, we can expect, I mean, even in this market, when, when companies do great, we're still seeing pullbacks. And so uh, I'll be interested to see what Disney does on Wednesday. And then Thursday, um, our good friends at a firm, shout out to our people at a firm, they'll be reporting one, another one of those companies that have been seeing a, a pullback over the past six months. Uh, so shout out to everybody there. I was trying uh, so to that one there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, people over there. so those are companies obviously we've spoken about on, on Market Mondays in the past. Um, so just keep an eye on those.
If you have it. All right. Let's get a couple uh, of questions. If we one, one last thing real quick on Disney. I would if you're gonna load up on it, I will wait till probably 81. 81 bucks on Disney. There you have it. There you have it. All right. Some questions. Jazz got a plan. You there? Hey, Hello, Queen. everybody. How are you? Yes. What's Good. Up, How are you? Good. 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 You know that. All right. Um, so a few <laughs> updates real fast for EYL University. We have the credit dude coming out on Thursday. So if you're working on your credit, I hope you hope to see you guys there at 12. Um, and then we have our first listening party on trading in the zone on Friday at 12. Um, so I'm excited for that. And then we have book club on Sunday. I want to give a special shout out to Magda. She actually released her first ever book yesterday and it was really hey, cool. that's amazing. Yeah. It's called I am King and she collaborated with an earner. Um, that's who, oh, her fire. publisher. So it's incredible. Her son co-illustrated it and it's a children's book. So shout out to her. I'm very proud of her and, you know, executing on your dreams and your goals and working with earners. Like that's, this, that's the goal, and we love to see earners doing that. So, shout out to her. That's incredible, Magda. If you in here, put your, put your um the link in the chat. Absolutely, you in here. yes. Put it in Drop the chat. The link. Um, and I think that is it. Let's get into questions. Um, I'm gonna start with Amir. Um, yourself, please. Hello, can y'all hear me? Yes. Yes. How are you? This is dope. Fire. Hi, I'm good, y'all. How y'all feeling? I'm good. Thank you for Great. being here. Yeah, thank y'all. Thank y'all for having me. Um, before I even get to my question, I just want to say um, thank y'all for everything that y'all do. Um, Troy, Rashad, I got a chance to meet y'all in L.A. when y'all was at the parlor and in Oakland. And um, I really love y'all, man. Y'all really changed my mindset as far as what I have to do with my business. And, um, and Ian just your words of wisdom, man, for the past two years has been fire. All y'all, y'all are amazing. So thank y'all. Thank, thank you for real. Appreciate it, bro. Love is love, man. Definitely. Uh, so my question is, uh, I started investing in 2020 and uh, I just I just opened up a yoga studio uh, and wellness studio. And um, I'm just trying to see as a business owner, what are some ways that I can strengthen uh, my portfolio? On a business side or uh stock side uh both but i want to say stock side because i've been uh when i started in 2020 i had like a ton of stocks i had like over like 20 and i just remember you saying two decks two tech two index and i just been chopping it down and i'm down to like uh about 10 stocks now um but um yeah most most likely more more so on the stock side what are you investing in? Uh, right now, I'm, I'm, I'm investing in Apple, Tesla, VOO, uh, SQ, IRM, SNSR, SPC, SPCE, uh, SoFi, uh, Copen, and CSCW. SoFi, I will let go of for sure. Uh, kudos to the good people at SoFi in case we want to have a relationship later. Um, what was the other one? SN what? Uh, CSCW. CSCW. Yeah, y'all yeah, killed that one tonight. Take that one out of the back and shoot it. Or, yeah, that was bad. What What was the other one? IBM? Uh, Iron Mountain. IRM. That's like my favorite stock right now. It's, it's been doing Keep that it one. out of my whole, my whole Keep that uh, one. portfolio. Yeah. yeah. The, the, that's a good one. Hold on to it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then... I would take a look at CMS as well, CMS Energy Corporation. I would not buy it in the 60s, but if it got down to maybe, CMS. I don't know, 59, I would add two. That, that can be a company that continues to add, but you're doing good. The, the two that are down that I mentioned, kill those. Everyone put in chat, kill the losers. You want to build an awesome. Like, if, if like I'm like shot down, like I got... I got in pretty much at a at a high average cost, so I'm like down seventy six percent. So should I just still kill it, or 
Yes. Should have killed her when they went down thirty percent. So what what adds to so far? And this is why I tell you guys, when everyone's telling you about a stock, and I always want you to look through this lens. What person in history has an idea that can make millions or billions and they share with the public? Nobody. Once again, I'm the only one crazy enough to give my strategy away in public. SoFi has no competitive advantage, but it's talked about a lot. Why? For liquidity for those who invested in it early. When I ask everyone what advantages SoFi have, even people at work at SoFi say nothing. Nothing. Got to kill it. Um, And it sucks to take a loss, but I need everyone to remember this. Just because you kill a losing investment doesn't mean that you are a losing investor. Mitigation of risk. I was talking to Diamond P earlier. One of the things that allows P to win so often, and Don brought it up, he mitigates risk, which means like as soon as we're in profit, I want to lock in and secure profit as quickly as possible. I don't want something that bleeds down 50, 40, 60, 70%. So we got, yeah, you got to kill that one. Got to kill it. Yeah. They took, they're taking a hit. Um, I know that, you know, they're big in the, the student loan. Uh, business to, of refinancing people's loans, but if people are not paying student loans, uh, obviously going to take a dent in your, bu- your business. And every time that we think the moratorium is going to come to an end, we extend it. It never does. That <laughs> promise is the promise, baby. I'm gonna take you on vacation, quit cheating, and I'm gonna act right, ladies. You know it's BS. If they wanted to give you a reprieve on the student loans, they would just do it. Although yeah. in six months, I'm gonna knock off ten thousand more. No. Not going to happen. Um, so on a student loan end, that, and that's going to cause one of our biggest crashes. And if that bubble pops in 26, we will relive the Great Depression in 27. It's only so long we can kick that can down the road. Trillion dollars. 37 yep. trillion. Pow. Yeah. Dramatic. So let's be honest. I know... Yeah, shout out again. I know everyone doesn't like it, the honesty, but I'd rather be honest with you and you win and be prepared than tell you a beautiful lie and you lose a bunch of money. Only focus on the best companies on earth. Man, appreciate y'all, man. Appreciate you, bro. Shout out to LA. Did you put the name of the studio? Somebody somebody was asking. What's what's the name of your studio? Well, Well, damn it, man. Damn. Yogi Athlete. It's Yogi Athlete. Yogi athlete, yeah. And where's well, it? Where's well, it at? Where's in it? LA? Yeah, it's in LA. And it's in Santa Monica. We just opened up in uh, in April. Awesome, nice little vibe in there. Okay, I'm gonna yeah. slide through. Yeah. And then we just got a nonprofit too. So we work with South LA. I'm born and raised in South LA. So uh, our our nonprofit is Eat, Move, Meditate dot uh, org. So that's dope. Let, let's link when I'm out there. Definitely, most definitely. Thank you. If you're in yeah. Southern California. Patronize the business. Very important. Absolutely. Got you. I'm looking it up right now, boss. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Janet. The how little? Um, yes, so please. Hello, can anyone hear me? Yes. How are sir. you? Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm doing well. Um, my name is Jahad Little. Um, I just want to throw it out there. I'm from Baltimore, Maryland, and grew up in Cherry Hill. If people are aware of that. Oh, wow. Yes. Um, and I'm also a cybersecurity technologist practitioner. Just throwing it out there as well. But anyway, I had a question about crypto. Bitcoin or other crypto doesn't seem to be a great hedge within the stock market during these times. Mm-hmm. What is the correlation? Between the Bitcoin and Ethereum dropping with the stock market? Yes that there is no such thing as decentralization. They use the people to believe in that lie and all the major hedge funds own the majority shares of all crypto. That's the correlation. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah. So, so, so how, how to offset it, you can look at commodities. Um, and, and I want you guys to remember this. Any competitive advantage that a person truly has like, you notice Buffett never tells you when he's going to buy, like, Chevron. He took a big oil position, right? The people who are truly winning, they're not going to tell you. And as much as I love a couple of people that are waving a Bitcoin flag, they're doing it because they're heavily invested in it. 
And they're using the we the people thing against the machine while they work for the machine. Same with rap. There are a lot of independent artists that are signed to labels that are saying, screw the labels, we need to do this. And I'm seeing a lot of assets of reliability stuff pop up in other rappers' comments, right? While being tied to a label. Like, no. So if they're trying to get the people to pump up the position so that they can then get payouts for traders and then themselves. I've always said this, the correlation between crypto, if we scream about it too much, they're going to come take it over. And they did. Real wealth requires silence and systems. Why wasn't anyone screaming this in 2014 or 2010? There's a reason why. So by the time it gets to the public, it's already stepped on. Mm -hmm. Since you're from Cherry Hill. (laughs) <laughs> and, and one last question um, that, was with, that was within the guidelines that was accepted um, they said um, also is nickel a great future investment for the long term I was looking at the um, what it was the um, run, a, run a blade in the movie they were speaking about material like nickel and everything else on that movie and I was just wondering is nickel will be a great investment for the EV space Depends on what, well, short answer, yes. The long answer depends on what price you acquire it. Okay. Um, just to jump in now, I wouldn't. But if you can get it at a great price, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I was in, a, I invested in nickel in 2009. Um, I don't know, at that time, I was just, we was just on this, this movement. I think uh, Rob Kiyosaki had a, a seminar in uh, New York City. Mm-hmm. He was just telling us like nickel, 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 nickel. And I'm like, shit, man, we got to invest in nickel. It was like trading like $15. And I was just like, this thing isn't moving fast enough for me. And uh, I kind of got out of, out of that commodity. So at that time, I wasn't a patient investor. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> yeah. a slow moving burn. Yeah, it's slow. It's real slow. But, you know, you got you to gotta, you gotta go with those experiences to, you know, to season yourself in, in this space. So yeah. in the movie Blade Runner, they touched on some points about invest i mean about those materials mm-hmm. and also how the future going to look in in you know kind of like conspiracy and it was like wow i see how things transition watching that movie and they mentioned those type of materials they run at 2049 you're you're on to something because uh, all of it is really is foreshadowing for what is going to happen and by me mm-hmm. studying the cybersecurity space and been in the you know within the business for 18 years I see a lot. And, you, you can know, see the trends. The yes. What, what, what would be one of the best companies to look at in the industry that you're in? Definitely once everything gets situated, um, um, Accentra, Crowd, CrowdStrike. Yeah. Um, yeah, the reason why I said um, Accentra, because they're a global consulting company and they are, you know, into the space, heavy into different sections um CrowdStrike it's a um they don't that's the only two I know for sure everything else is like competition oh Paul Auto Paul Auto is hitting real big because it's part of the new generation of what you say like firewall and um IDS and IPS IDS is intrusion detection IPS is intrusion protection systems and they kind of tied in with the cloud space yeah so within that cloud space, they can kind of protect, you know, try to create some algorithms or some type of protection around AWS cloud or Google cloud and things of that nature so that systems could be well protected. Oh, and also, well, uh, also Zscaler. Well, uh, what's the number one to, to cybersecurity right now that you see? Um, say that one more time for me. Well, what's the biggest threat that you see right now to cybersecurity? The biggest threat well, social um, social engineering, that's always be us, the people of giving out information and don't know how to handle their own systems. But outside of that, um, I see cl- um, infl- infiltrating in the cloud. Um, it can, it can vary. It, yeah. it can definitely vary. But definitely, I would say we are, as people, we are the biggest threat because we just allowing ourselves to do whatever to the system and just giving out free information and just clicking. I notice a lot. It always be the threats within the organization that we just accept and click. So I, say, so I say we are the biggest threat. Social engineering is the biggest threat. And it's not really a real thing to 
secure that piece at the, at the moment until they still find a ways to how we authenticate, I guess, with our blood type or whatever, but that'll be something in the near future. I appreciate it. That was, that, yo, and he gave y'all solid, solid companies. Shout, shout out to you, uh, Jod. When we spoke about cybersecurity and they asked what companies, they're the same exact three you just said, the same exact three I said. CrowdStrike, and if you don't know the ticket, C-R-W-D, Palo Alto, P-A-N-W, Zscaler, Z-S. Those three are solid. Top three. Appreciate you, bro. Even still, I appreciate you. <laughs> Jay, who we got? David, I'm here, so please. Hello, guys. Can you hear me? Yes, how are you? There. Oh, no. I'm good. How about how are y'all? I'm great, man. Uh, uh, all right. Well, first of all, appreciate y'all, man, and for everything y'all do. I always got to tell you that. Uh, I'll, I'll try to make my question pretty quick because you guys basically answered a lot of it throughout today. Uh, but first of all, I wanted to shout out my little brother because he's, I just put him on y'all and he's been on it like nonstop watching every market Mondays ever since the first one up trying to catch up. But that got me into watching every single one back again and like taking notes and stuff. And I saw, I think it was on episode 20 that you recommended to, if you have like a large sum of money to kind of wait until September. And I recommend people to go watch that one because it also talks about stock splits. You really get down into that. Thank but you. I wanted to, I wanted to ask if I should wait until September for or if I should take advantage of uh, of you know the prices of right now how everything's going right now. Um, are you looking to invest a large amount of money? Uh, for me, it's large. Yeah, oh, yeah, <laughs> I have yeah, a little yeah, bit yeah. of a savings. But, yes, that's sir. the only thing that matters if it's large. Which ones are you looking at? Uh, honestly, just Apple, Microsoft, Square, and Amazon and VOO. Um. I'm kind of kind of concentrate on that basically. Yeah, if Apple, so the first area I'm looking for Apple. If Apple goes to like 139, I will buy some there. The buy-in price that I'm really looking for for Apple is 121.79. Not saying that we will get there, but if we get there, the rest of the market should probably be down at least 55% on average. I will look there. Um, but if we start to, if we make it through the summer, okay. And the bleeding stops. Yeah. I will put the money in, in September, but definitely between one thirty nine and yeah. Well, one twenty one is where I'm looking to buy for sure on Apple. I mean, either way, I'm still, I'm still following the blueprint. I'm still a uh, dollar cost averaging into all those. I just wanted to make sure, cause I didn't want to put a little too much now and then kind of miss the opportunity for it the opportunity arose in september you know how you spoke of yeah the, the thing is though um i know and that's why i tried to touch on earlier i know it always feels like we're going to miss an opportunity that is the greatest way that people end up tricking us to do something that's not beneficial for us um is to induce fomo because the same way i played this little zen music in the background the reason why media companies always do the breaking news and Erratic talking is because it drives higher viewership. Write this down. Peace does not usually lead to higher profit in the media space. That's why you see so much yelling, screaming to keep attention. Um, but for your own account, it's better for you to be peaceful. Even on VO, like if VO goes to 340, 450, I'll be happy. And then Microsoft, Stock Club, don't kill me. Um, yeah, if Microsoft pushes down to like 238. I'll be happy there. It's a 264 now. And then that's when we should start yes, to turn around and rebound. It'd be good. Yeah, I'm actually in the stop club and then uh, for the red panda. The oh, well, I'll, 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 yeah, so, I'll see yeah. that. And, and I'll put prices uh, in for some more too. So we'll be good. Sweet. Also, I just wanted to suggest maybe uh, I, I got super into squared. So if you guys maybe want to talk about like the Blue Sky project and all that, the, how it's built on the framework of Cash App on the TBD. TB decks, and I mean, I really like if people just Google into that, and yeah, I don't know. I feel like it's gonna change the game, and it be another connection between Elon and Jack Dorsey, Absolutely. and that's just like another reason why I'm bullish on on Cash App, yes sir. But yeah, I'll catch you tonight for sure on the call. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Um, Shout out to you, yes, David. Yeah, and 16. even if Square gets to like forty, maybe it'll be acquisition target. 
Elon got all the financing in the world to, to buy some stuff up. So, yeah, Microsoft at 238. I like it at 264 too. <laughs> yeah, but two, yeah. I mean, 238. That's we gotta wait for our spots. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. They said 29k wouldn't come on Bitcoin. He's known as nothing about crypto, he, he doesn't even know about Nakamoto. Okay, Satoshi heard you. It is now at 30. 30- 1,841. <laughs> yeah. Good job, Putin, for pushing it up. All right. Our next question comes from AJ Jeffers. Unmute yourself, please. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. How are yeah. you? Yeah. Okay? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. Um, first, I want to say happy Mother's Day to all the mothers, acting mothers, stepmothers, grandmothers, anyone acting like a mother. Because, like Tupac said, Especially on single mothers. I don't know how you do it. Because I'm here washing bottles right now. For real, <laughs> man. Listen, when you're active dad, your respect for, for mothers go way up through the roof. I, I agree. I feel you. Yeah. Oh, you on bottle duty, man. I know that. I know that. <laughs> yeah. That's what took me so long to mute. But um, my question was, with Fidelity and BlackRock now starting to offer ETFs around crypto, I know right now they're in, like, Coinbase and such like that, do you think they will start actually doing ETFs with actual crypto, like buying a Bitcoin or Ethereum? And especially if um, I heard some also talks with, I think it was Fidelity, even pushing that um, you should be able to even put crypto in your 401ks now. That would be dangerous. Yeah, the 401k very, very thing. The 401k yeah. thing is actually, I posted that last week. 401k thing is going to happen. I mean, regulators are trying to give them some pushback, but they already said that they want to roll that out in by the um, summer. Fidelity is the largest 401k provider in America. Um, so when they, I think they're gonna, it's going to happen. So when it happens, then, um, you know, it'll probably be a domino effect and a lot of other companies will follow, follow their lead. But um, yeah, they said that they, they plan on rolling that out this summer. Um, they're going to have the option that employers can opt into to um, provide Bitcoin as an asset in the 401k. So that's, that's going to be interesting. Yeah. I think we spoke about that last year when we were talking about Fidelity trying to get uh, Bitcoin or uh, cryptocurrency ETFs and how it's a six months process. And after the six months process, there'll be a decision. Well, that six months has passed and they have pushed it back another six months. And so okay. we'll see. <laughs> Everyone who's thinking, I'll oh, go ahead shot. Get it. So with your question, um, it doesn't necessarily they they can have it in a four hundred one k without having an ETF. Mm-hmm. So the, the two the two are not directly related. BlackRock is working on an ETF, but Fidelity, that's the four hundred one k. Yeah, so that's that's a different yeah. situation. Okay. They come out with an oh. ETF. Would y'all invest in it or not? No. Okay. Um. For the 401k, I want you guys to do a homework assignment right now and put it in chat. What is the average monthly drawdown of Bitcoin? Which is the safest out of most crypto? And based on that monthly drawdown, how many months would it take for your portfolio to potentially go to zero? That's why it's dangerous. Because let's say hypothetically, from 2022 through 2024, we are in a bear market. And we do something like 2000 to 2002. How long before your portfolio will go out of business? You have to know that. That's the reason why I say, if you know the number of trades, you can know your, how, what alpha you, you, you give, the beta, your Sertino, your risk to reward ratio, your profit factor. But also you have to know if you are on a losing streak or an asset falls down, how long will it take for you to bleed and lose 30%, 50%, or 100%? It would take an act of God for Apple to fall 50%. So those are some things you have to consider before you are investing in the asset. Even when I ask little things like, Troy Rashad, how many interviews you miss? None. Reliability. Right? Crystal ball. Yeah. Don't miss. It may sound crazy. You have to invest in companies that are consistently outperforming. Most asset classes are not. And we're going to see if we crack 21,000, it's going to be a couple of fund managers screaming. Yeah. Be careful. Okay. Yeah. There, there was a report. Of, I think if it gets to 21, I know the CEO of Michael Strategy said um, 
they're gonna have to. <laughs> I forget that they didn't have to short their position. It, margin it call. Yeah, margin call. That's what it was. They would have to have a margin call if it gets to twenty one. So yeah. if, if that if that uh, the crystal ball is right. It's gonna be some some fun times. Right? I like it, but but but, but but an asset that is good, you don't have to promote. As Trap will say, "Good dope sell itself." Mm-hmm. <laughs> like everybody's going on these long ass rants about why it's the future, and now all of a sudden they care about Bolivia and Brazil and what happens in Africa, and like then why don't you make a payment rail system for Africa three years ago? Give a fuck. Great. <laughs> I see. It goes the signal, y'all. 21. Remember that number. Yeah. If you invested in Michael Strategy, 21. Remember the, the 21,000 mark, please. And Any I don't real? want the number to be here for him, but that, w- that would be terrible. That would. Yeah. Yep. Been real, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Market Mondays, another glorious Market Mondays. A lot of information. A lot of information. Yeah. We, and we, we saved some yeah. too. You have to watch it a few times at least yeah. um, to really get a full grist of everything. But um, I feel like, you know. Take grit, just? Yes. Uh, I got you. If you um, are patient, mm-hmm. if you're patient and you have capital, you will be able to make some money in this market. I know it's painful right now when the mm-hmm. market goes down like this, but, you know, be smart, be intelligent, um, follow the blueprints that have been laid out. And um, yeah, it always gets better. The market always goes up. That's mm-hmm. one thing that, that happens over the course of time is the market always goes up. It might not go up in the time that you want it to go up, but over the course of history, it has only gone up long periods of time. All for the long term. And keep your eyes tuned to what the Fed does and when they'll start back with quantitative easing. They probably have to do it probably by 19, I mean, 2026 or 27 or 28. They won't be able to eliminate quantitative easing forever. It'll come back in some form. Um, but yeah, focus on the top companies in the world, top asset classes, buy at the best prices and you're good. And if, and I'm going to be honest, when you saw Jack adding crypto, Tesla adding crypto, they were telling you the market's about to crash. Now, all of them at PayPal Mafia who knows how to trade, were telling you, hey man, it's about to eft up. Got to trade our way into profitability. If you do not know how to short-term invest, you are prey. We're around it. And guess what? The banks don't care. Hedge funds don't care. It is no one else's job but you to make you rich and your family rich. And men, listen up. Divorce rates go up. Breakups go up in recessions. Boy, you want to be a king? Let that paper come through when everybody else is struggling. You live like Eddie Murphy coming to America. Be in a bathrobe, getting your teeth brushed. Job is to project and provide, and rest in peace to Kevin Samuels. I do not want to leave that out. Rest, rest, in, in, peace. rest in peace to Kevin yeah, Samuels. Um, okay, let's talk about this Kendrick Lowe. Rest in peace to, to him. Let's yeah. talk, and and, and yeah, condolences to his family. Rest in peace to Kevin Samuels, I'm sure. Let's talk about this Kendrick Lamar situation. Let's talk about it. 9 30 last night, I just happened to be on Instagram. I'm usually not at that time, and Kendrick never posts. And I saw the message, and I, 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 what I witnessed was a written testimony, a beautiful piece of art that was put together. The first thing I did was I texted to Shadi. The next thing I did was text it to 19 Keys. They didn't call me back within five minutes. I started calling them like, did you see what I just sent you? Yeah. Uh, and they're like, nah, then Keys like, I'm admitted in, I gotta call you back. It is, uh, Kendrick is special, man. K- Kendrick Duckworth is, is special. He, uh, mm-hmm. I don't, Last night, what I what I what I took from his the piece of art that he put out, uh, the heart part five, was the level of brilliance is just at a different is at a different like frequency, man. Like I feel like for the past year or so, we we've been, in the words of my brother, nineteen keys, we've had music that was low frequency, and so yep. when art that comes out like that hits us, it reminds us like, oh, this he's talking about something, he's done it in a masterful way. And he's, in his words, he's like, look, he solidified himself as one of the goats, if not the goat. He's positioned himself. Now, the only knock against him is obviously he puts out every four years. But if it takes that much time to put out an effort like he did last night, mm-hmm. I can almost be okay with it. Now, the interesting part is that 
the interesting part is that this is his last effort with TDE, which we'll see. It may speed up that time, that creative process. But last night, that video, if y'all haven't watched it, go check it out. It's on Tidal. It's on YouTube. It's on that. Whatever y'all watch videos on, it's there. I think one of the, the, the most important records I've heard, probably since, I'm going to go 444, four, four, the entire album. Just, I mean, from verse one to verse three, the tribute to Nip, obviously we got Nip up tonight. Yeah. The face changes, the way that the words like kind of assimilated with the faces that were changing. I was blown away. I was blown away. I told you a written testimony last night is what we witnessed. Yeah. I can't wait for Thursday evening when the new album comes out. Kendrick Duckworth, put his name right where it needs to be. Legend. Tough off. Tough off. <laughs> Go ahead. Shout out, shout out to Kung Fu Kenny, man. One of the greatest, one of the greatest, very, very eclectic young man. And uh, yeah, it was dope, man. Dope, dope body of work that he put out. I need more excitement from you, man. <laughs> Don't stop doing that. <laughs> that was dope, man. I liked it. I like I really liked the Nipsey Hustle tribute a lot. That was very, that was very thoughtful. Especially how he blended Kobe in there with that, you know, rest in peace to Kobe and Nip. Yeah, um, yeah, man. Kendrick, Kendrick's one of our, one of our, one of the greatest, one of the greatest of this generation for sure. Let's enjoy him while he's here. I wouldn't be surprised if he does one album on his own and leaves. Let's enjoy him while he's here. And another person that stays off social media and focuses on mastery of craft. Definitely. Yep. Definitely. And there was another piece of art that was put out last night. And um, me and Keys were just going back and forth. Um, Kanye put out a Life of the Party, a video for that. Um, and so again, it was with the face changes, but his were kind of like historical times in his life going back. But bigger than the video, and I try to tell him, and he probably he didn't catch it at first. He, I'm like, what he really did was just put out an ad for Yeezy Gap, right? So if you look at the video, every time there's a picture, it, he has on a piece of merch from the new Balenciaga collaboration that's going to drop on the 25th. And so it sounds like a music video release and the song is dope. And I wish he would have had the Andre 3000 version. That version yeah. is incredible. But the video is really, it's his, it's his ad for the, the, the clothing line that's about to, about to drop. It's beautiful. I mean, it's got uh, Kanye, man. I'll play it. It was a great I'll night play. for hip hop last night. Shout out to Yeezy. Um, yeah. Shout out to Yeezy. Shout out to, to Kendrick Lamar. Rest in peace to Kevin Samuels. Um, what else we got? Oh, shout, I just yo, want to remind out. the earners too about trading in the zone on Sunday, and to complete the survey that we send out. We sent out to you guys, so look out for that. The, the chancellor has spoken. I just wanted to say this. <laughs> That's the shout out to John ja Morant. John ja Morant, get um, get get well soon. I heard he's going to be out for the whole season. Yeah. Um. So get well soon. One of the most exciting players in the league, Absolutely. if not the most exciting player in the league. Um. Really enjoy. Hit, watching see. him play, so must see. I'm disappointed. Um, Luka Doncic beast. is, is beast. yes, nice. different Certif level, certified beast, a different level. MVP. I told you three weeks ago who it was going to be. Who, who, who's your picks for the NBA Finals? Let's go over this right now. Picks. Uh, who's going to win? Who's going to win? The Bucks. You said the Bucks. Golden State. I got the Golden State Warriors winning the championship. I, I I got Bucks and Golden State going. Um, I, I would love to see Curry win. If they can stay healthy, they'll win. But if not, Giannis gonna pick one up. Another one, you mean? Back to back. I, I just the way the Warriors are constructed with Clay playing well again, Steph obviously playing well, Jordan Poole, who I thought was the most <laughs> different player. I different. Mean, this dude is he's 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 really different. And then I didn't even say Andrew Wiggins, who was a starter in the All Star game. Imagine if Draymond played well. Yeah, Draymond is Draymond. <laughs> so, I I mean, it's tough, man. They're, they're a tough team to, to play against and win. Um, and shout out to Chris Paul, man. He handled himself. He went to about like a professional. They put hands on his mom yesterday. Do you hear about this? His mom, so his mom was behind a the bench. They had a fan. They they tried to hug, allegedly tried to hug her, but they touched her. Um, and so I don't know how he didn't run into the stands, but he didn't. And um, But what? what Wait, what, they put what, hands on her? Like they but hit we, her? But we, or we allegedly. To, I said we, allegedly. Yeah, we have, allegedly. They allegedly hit her? But did we see the video? No, by the time they tried to get to it, it was already him, like, but did those we, dude escorting him out. But there was witnesses. We don't there. really know exactly what happened. But if the Dallas is, Mavericks put out a statement that they, he tried to hug them on one, on one willingly, 
Um, and that led to him getting pushed. And then he pushed Chris Paul's wife. They put out a statement, the, the Mavericks put out a statement. But even that, man, that's crazy. Like it's Mother's Day, bro. Like, what are we doing? I'm letting y'all. But he handled himself like a professional. He, you you he said, I'm gonna see you. I'm gonna see you later. Yeah, you touch my mom. I'm gonna keep that back. Hey, stupid if you want to. You're gonna see why they call me Big Sniper and all this ghost shit. And it won't be none of my homeboys. <sighs> Boy. You Chicago's own. Okay. Drill town. <laughs> Yeah, shout out to him though. Hey, oh boy, R from the Chappelle show. He would have had like four of them legs too. You'd have looked like Bugs Bunny. That's wild. NBA got to do something about that. They got to do something. They got to do something. Shout out to Monty Williams, who was the coach of the year. Um, a credible coach. So yeah, shout out to him. And shout out to uh, I went to Broadway. MJ on Broadway. Incredible show. If you haven't seen MJ on Broadway and you're in the New York tri state area, I encourage you to go see it. Incredible. Incredible. All right. This yeah, Grace Grace and, by the yeah. way, guys, I get clowned every time you guys talk about sports. Everyone's like, look at Janet's face. I get text messages. But yeah, yeah, the anyway. Celtics are playing. That you got I don't even know what's no happening. Whole team. That's funny. <laughs> Celtics. <laughs> Celtics got a good team too. Are they losing? Um, they, might they might have lost already. I'm not sure. Um Atlanta. This weekend we're gonna be in Atlanta. We got two events. We got two free events. One's for children, ages 12 to 17. The other one's for adults. You could just go to the website, click the link, uh, ATL Youth Event for yep. the kids, and click the Fireside Chat event for the adults. Limited seating. It's going to be an intimate, intimate situation. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be a dope, dope, dope event. Dope event for children and a dope event for adults. Two separate events running simultaneously. Um, really going, going to do it, man. So um, They said they need your pick. You didn't, you didn't give your pick. I like Golden State. I like Golden State. Right. Um, 19 yeah. Keys just texted me. I'm not sure where this came from, but he said Jay Z's better than Biggie. Hot take. Um, Wait, he just randomly said that. Yeah, that's <laughs> random. I'm a diehard <laughs> Tupac fan. I don't think there's any rapper on earth that's better than Big when he nowhere near close. And I'm a diehard <laughs> Tupac fan. Uh, I, would, I mean, I would give Jay the edge just because of longevity. Y'all, I don't even have to answer this question. Y'all, read. if we're comparing during the same time frame, listen, Sean Corey Carter is the greatest rapper that's ever lived. Period. We got to stop when that's on Brooklyn. <laughs> that's well, on Best Style. Speaking of that, speaking of that, tomorrow, Lenny S <laughs> episode, oh, please, sir. <laughs> yes, Rock Nation, Rock Nation. EYL collaboration. Um, shout out to my guy Lenny S. Very, very good dude. Super humble. Um, we got his episode coming out on Earn Your Leisure. And shout out to my guy YG. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Um, good dude. Assets over liabilities out right now and on YouTube on yeah. Wednesday. So yeah, shout out to everybody that checked out the Angela E episode last week. That was dope. Shout out to her. Yeah, YG's episode. That was that was a that was a dope one. We didn't we didn't know what to expect, but we were pleasantly surprised. And like I said, we Pisces, so once we figured that out, it was smooth sailing from there. We'll tell you I'm we'll sorry. tell you about the story behind the interview though. Yeah. Jizzle. Oh yeah, <laughs> so it's, 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 it's a story. It's a story behind the story. Um, LA right. May fourteenth, JP Morgan Chase event. Uh, kudos. Pull to up on that. Yeah. Shout out to y'all, y'all shout out up. to shout out to Nicole at Chase. Oh, congratulations. Shout out to the whole Chase team. If you ain't well, it's sold out, but uh, oh, yeah. we have another one, Dallas. I'll post it. But join, I'm telling you, it's gonna sell in an hour. Red Panda family, I love y'all, earners. I love y'all. Thank y'all for showing up and showing out. It's gonna sell out fast. I think it's room maybe for like 500 people. That's gonna move quick. And shout out to Kyrie. Um, I'll hit you when I'm done on Stock Club. There you have it, Kyrie Irving or another Kyrie. No, it's only one Kyrie. It's only one <laughs> oh, Kyrie. All right. That, well, there's actually a few Kyries. I know, um, but I, I just know one. I know a few. Well, I know one. But well, shout out to Kyrie Irving. Um, we need that high level conversation with 19 Keys. That's what happened. Absolutely. Just, just, I wrote on 19 Keys post. I know they they're friends. Um, so yeah, shout out to Kyrie, one of my, one of the most entertaining players of all time. Kendrick Duckworth. Uh, all right, album guys. release. Somebody give us the details on it, please. Thank you. Headed Ian, back to Cali. Ian, you brought the suit back today. You know, just I'm uh I'm on my little presidential run. I gotta make some little rounds and 
kissing babies and stuff. So, yo, Ian, you and Janet look like you're about to interview me and Shadi right now. That's so tell me, like. what are your projections <laughs> for your media company? And nah, son, drill music, son. <laughs> shout, out, shout out to, before we leave, shout out to Slutty Vegan. Ah, uh, yes. Um, just raised $25 million on the C round. Wow. Which now values her company at $100 million. So. One zero zero. That's incredible. $100 million valuation for Slutty Vegan. Um, incredible. So yeah. And the food's incredible. Shout out to Pinky. Shout out to Pinky. Indeed. Interview uh, coming soon? Huh? Oh yeah, you know that was supposed to happen a while ago, but you know, just yeah, 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 yeah. scheduling. She's, you know, but we're gonna get that done. Yeah, yeah that happened before it's time. That definitely yeah. has to happen for sure, for sure. It's actually yeah. better now that that all this is happening because we got even more stuff to talk about. So, yeah. shout out to her, hundred billion dollar, hundred million dollar valuation, incredible. Um, big, big, in four years doing a thing. Yeah, slutty vegan, That's inspiring. Wow. Yeah, yeah, heavy mm. in the streets. Uh, so if, if slutty <laughs> worth a hundred, what the crystal ball worth? <laughs> <laughs> Goldman Citadel, call me. You about to make some magic happen. I'm gonna see y'all this week too. That's a fact. Oh that, yeah, yeah, that is a that. fact. That's also a fact. You know how that? You know how? You know how that go? Yeah. Oh yeah. Maybe. The back outside tour. <laughs> it's in full effect. Hey. <laughs> Headed home. Headed home. Yeah. All right, y'all. Again, be good to each other. Reach out. Text somebody. Um, and, and just be kind to each other, y'all. Be kind to each other, and be kind to yourselves. Be kind yeah. to yourselves. Love is love. Y'all know that. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Market Monday is the biggest investment show in the world. NFT is headed to up. Instagram next week. We'll talk about that next week. That's a fact. Collapse Later. coming. <laughs> <laughs>